Hey guys, I'm Matt Lighty, and this video we're talking about alternate leveling methods, ideologies, and just generally cool ideas in Path of Exile. And this was, uh, well, a whole bunch of ideas basically pulled from my viewers and people in Discord and Reddit and, you know, just what have you. So these are a bunch of people had a lot of similar ideas and some ones not so popular, but we'll discuss those. And these are basically broken down into five major categories. The categories are campaign with partial unlocks and assists, character creation, currency and gear, uh, an endless slash scaling XYZ mechanic, character experience transfer, and then like the other category. So the first one we're gonna look into is the campaign with partial unlocks and assists. We'll have a, a little mini lighty on screen next to the one we're discussing if you get lost. First one's permanent waypoints. This one's quite simple. The idea of having all waypoints permanently unlocked across characters, and this will reset during a new league, but it persists in standard. Meaning you're playing a new league, you go through your one character, you unlock all the waypoints in the campaign, and on your second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. characters, you'll have all waypoints unlocked. It'll just help a little bit. It's a partial unlock or a partial assist for the campaign as is. Next idea was permanent everything. So not just waypoints, but quests. Quest rewards are also permanently unlocked across the characters after the first one. Again, resets during New League, persists in standard, but imagine playing a second character that has access to all quest rewards and passive points and all the waypoints. It'll definitely supercharge your leveling. Still have to go through the motions, but it's you know, significantly easier. Next idea is the late act start. This is the concept of having a character uh, start at a certain point in the axe after going through it. So you have your one character, goes through Act 1 through 10. On your second character, let's say you start at Act 6 this time. You know, level 45, you have your Acts 1 through 5 quest complete, all the rewards unlocked, first lab done, and you're basically made with a pre-level character going through Acts 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which again cuts out a substantial portion of the game, a much, much slower, uh, you know, way of going through the Acts. Next idea is a delayed starter gear. This is an interesting concept of time gating for uh, catch-up mechanics, basically. So all characters created one week after a league starts will begin with a full set of white, unique, untradeable gear. This can include a Tabula Rasa or some of the uh, uniques we found in the Endless Delve and Endless Heist event. A way of just, you know, getting your character a little boost after missing the first week. Similar idea is the delayed experience boost. So all characters created a week after the league has begun have a 50% increased experience gain up until level 67 or when maps begin. That way you can over level quite easily and can focus on just running through the acts and still be on par with leveling until you get to the end of act 10. Next we have streamlined passives and labs. This is basically the concept that was introduced in Endless Heist and Delve and things similar, which is you have the quest rewards and lab unlocks at different breakpoints. Examples include level 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. You'll get four passive points. It's jumbling in the quest passives and levels 33, 55, 68, etc. will automatically unlock your lab. Just saving you some time. Streamlining. Next idea is minimal zone bypass. Now this means that it basically grants act fast tracking for reaching a minimal level of future acts. So instead of reaching act 10 through the normal progression of going through act nine, or reaching act two after killing Mervo, the second your character reaches level 12, you will instantly grant access to act two. Basically, once you reach the minimum level for the next act, you'll just be able to go there. This just saves you some time, and if you want to, you know, you know, grind instead of actually going through all the little quest motions, you could do that instead. Next is a very simple one, which is just removing the experience penalty, pre-level 67. So, basically, before you get to maps, the experience penalty for being under-leveled, over-leveled, in a party, all that's just removed. This means your friends can effectively experience grind your level 1 character in level, we'll say, you know, Act 10, for example, or you could just grind and carry your friends. Uh, just basically a way of removing the penalty that currently exists pre-maps. And the final idea for this category is the Atlas campaign passives. So having it so your Atlas passive tree will also affect the campaign. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword, but it's a fun idea. I think that'll introduce a lot of loot and mob clearing, which again equals experience for this. So imagine you're, you know, you have a guaranteed shrine per zone if you picked up every shrine thing, you have a guaranteed essence per zone if you picked up every essence on your Atlas tree. And of course, they're all buffed from the Atlas Passive Tree, so more gear, more loot, more rares to kill, more experience. It'll make it a little bit faster. The next category is Character Creation Currency and Gear. Now, the first one for this is Pre-Made Character Currency. This essentially is a rare currency that drops and grants you a pre-leveled character. 
Uh, you know, so basically you find something that has, let's say, a sacred orb drop rate, which is roughly four times the drop rate of Exalted. Maybe have it gated behind, like, tier 14 maps. And basically when it drops, it just lets you make a level 67 character or a level 50 character. That's to be decided. But just a type of currency that lets you make a pre-leveled character. We know we have access to making pre-leveled characters because they existed in PvP. You can make level 28, so similar system. And similar to that is the pre-made character boss reward. Same concept, you grant a pre-leveled character upon killing a pinnacle boss, or all pinnacle bosses. So an example of this is maybe you kill Maven, and doing so gets you a free level 67 character with all the quests, rewards, and waypoints unlocked. Just so if you want to re-roll, or you want to mess around, you have the option to. But at least you have to prove yourself to do so. In this example, killing a pinnacle boss. And similar to that is pre-made character level milestones. So similar to the concept of killing a maven or a pinnacle boss to get a pre-leveled character, this one is just reaching a level cap. So maybe at level 95, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe level 100, you get a, a free level 67 character, you know, in the beginning of maps, all the quests and waypoints unlocked, etc. Now to take it a monetization step kind of sideways, maybe you just grant access to a purchased pre-level character. Now, Path of Exile currently has had a pretty good aversion to having um, any sort of in-game impact where it comes to the shop, so the real money shop. Granted, you really can't play trade without tab, so there's that, but maybe we grant the access to purchase a pre-leveled character, maybe after a one-week delay, for accounts that have done things like reach level 90 or killed Maven. And again, it'll only be a pre-leveled character, level 67 or 68, just beginning in maps, just so you could skip the campaign. Another cool idea is the concept of craftable and scalable gear. So we'll do craftable experience gear first. Very simple concept, just have gear that is craftable or maybe drops from a certain boss or mechanic. And this gear has things like 10% increased rate of experience gain. We know it already exists on uniques such as Parandus Ring and Supreme Truth Mace. So the concept of having experience boosting gear is not foreign, but just imagine you had 10% on every piece of rare gear. So while leveling, it makes it a lot more faster, a lot more easy of experience. And to that point, the concept of scalable gear. Now we currently have certain uniques that can scale with character levels. Things like Poet Pen get incrementally stronger as your character gets stronger every 25 levels. So maybe we have uniques or rares that are made for leveling that scale with the zone level and cap at level 67 so they can't be used to abused after maps but just to get to maps so having gear that scales to your level similar to world of warcraft for the craftable experience gear that increases your experience or it scales with you could be a pretty cool idea next up we have the endless slash scaling xyz you know the whatever now this is broken down in a few categories itself uh, one is the endless mechanic scaling this one we've had, we've tried it, it's existed in a lot of iterations. So Endless Delve, Endless Heist, used to have an event called Endless Ledge. These things have existed historically and people tend to like them in the capacity of leveling through them because it incorporates a lot of ideas we've talked about. The ideas of getting passive at level breakpoints, the ideas of passing labyrinth, the ideas of engaging with the mechanic in a super concentrated way to bypass mapping. You know, the average time to reach, we'll say, maps for a new character in Path of Exile's campaign is 8 to 10 hours, but through Heist and through Delve, it's more like 3 to 4. That's a large chunk of time you could save there. So areas that scale with character level, and again, even capping at level 67, just to make it for a pre-mapping experience, would be a pretty cool idea. Similar to that is the scaling stone and emblems. Now, this is more of a tradable concept, which is things like Breach Stones, Timeless Legions, and Blight Maps that scale with the level of your character. Again, character capping, scaling at 67 for pre-maps, but it's a cool concept because it introduces an economic aspect to it, and it makes uh, the leveling scaling in a mechanic tradable. To tangent one other step, we have scalable map drops. This is things like Think Untainted Paradise that basically scales to the character's level, uh, and it can, again, be capped at 67 or even not capped at 67. It can just be whatever. You know, historically, we've been gate kept out of level 100 less and less as time goes on the time to get to 100 upon past initial inception was roughly six months we've got down to a well less than six days for a player who's competent so that kind of has gone by the wayside so you know in a way of uh <laughs> quoting a certain man why fight progress a more minor but fun level is the Scalable Sacrifice Fragments. Sacrifice Fragments is a uh, tool utilized through Val side zones that you can acquire even while leveling you can get Sacrifice Fragments. And if we made these tradable or non-tradable that just basically generate a Sacrifice Val side zone that scales with the character level. Again, capped at 67 pre-maps. 
could be kind of fun. And then my personal favorite idea from all of these things, which is really taking, uh, you know, homage from the old days of Torchlight, which is fully scalable mapping. This concept is nothing more than your character enters a room, the room has a map device that has one button that just says start map, and it generates a map with random stats at the level of your character. If I'm level 1, the map is level 1. If I do a couple level 1 maps, I get level 2. Next time I run a map, that's level 2. And so on and so forth. This is a much more streamlined and kind of turn off your brain way of going about it. But this concept has existed in ARPGs before. It'd be cool to see it implemented in Path of Exile. Next category is Character XP Transfer. So, this is a bit of a wonky one. Alright, but bear with me. Experience Transfer Reroll. Now, this concept is basically the experience transfer reroll to convert the existing character and their experience into a new character with some sort of penalty for conversion. So an example of that is imagine your character level 75, you're playing a witch, but you're kind of done and you want to play a marauder. It converts level 75 witch into level 50 marauder. And uh, yeah, you have all the quests and stuff unlocked up to that point. And maybe the concept of just doing this even without a penalty would be okay. Next is the interesting one that is item to experience conversion. Some sort of in-game machine or function that basically eats and gobbles up uniques, gems, currency, uh, grants some sort of equivocal value of experience to that character that is pre-level 67. So examples include, imagine you feed one exalted orb to the gobbling machine and it grants your, little, you know, your character one full level, or one chaos equals 5% experience. So if you want to just bypass some of the early shit parts of the, uh, the campaign, for example, maybe this allows you to skip the axe at certain points that you dislike. And of course, it'll automatically transfer you to the next act once you reach whatever that level is. So, interesting concept. And finally in this category is just the base concept of currency experience transfer. Uh, rare currency that basically transfers or re-rolls a converted character into another one. So basically it's a piece of currency that makes my level 80 wish into a level 80 marauder, or level 80, you know, scion, whatever. Uh, you can make this rare, you can make this even a craftable option using a similar thing to like the Orb of Regret for the books, maybe a hundred Orb of Regrets or a thousand Orb of Regrets. Uh, you know, it will get you one character re-roll because people will pay, I guarantee there's someone out there who would pay a thousand Regrets to make the level 95 Witch into a level 95 anything else. And the final category are the suggestions that I received I put in the other section. Uh, and basically this person unknowingly described Path of Exile 2 when he said, and I quote, maybe a second leveling campaign that's a bit shorter and much more fun to run through. Now, that's kind of what they're intending to do with Path of Exile 2. Uh, for those who don't know, Path of Exile 2 is nothing more than a leveling expansion that also includes a large sum of new ascendancies locked behind that campaign. Meaning currently in the iteration of Path 1, you have 10 acts, which makes up the first Path of Exile. In those 10 acts, each class has three ascendancies, Scion having its one. In Path of Exile 2, it is seven acts. Each character has two new ascendancies, and I'm assuming Scion has one. We don't know that for a fact. But each act is locked behind each ascendancy. So if you want to become a, we'll say, Berserker, you have to do Path 1. If you want to become, you know, whatever new Marauder can be there, Cool Guy Joe, we'll call him, <laughs> you, have to, you have to do Path 2 to get that. And then they both meet at the end of the game, which is, you know, maps where the game actually begins. But yeah, that's Path 2 in a nutshell, so hopefully we'll see something like that. Look forward to that in the future. And the last option we have, and before I explain this, this this was a, such a fantastic idea. Uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone who submitted ideas. There were a lot. I'm sure in the comments below you could suggest things that we haven't listed or even small twists and turns to examples we've given. There are so many different options for alternate leveling or ways to augment the leveling experience in Path of Exo. And, you know, most people agree that in the current iteration of the game, getting two maps is the biggest hurdle for people playing the game. That being said, would be maybe not appreciate our characters if we didn't have to go through the leveling process. Well, who knows? But I look forward to seeing what options they give us in the future. Now, the final Path of Exile. Now, I want you to picture this. At the end of Uber Lab drops a character trial. When you complete the trial, you go into the reward room, and you get to see the character creation window from the start. There's where you select and name your new character. It logs out of your current character, and you spawn on the beach. The beach is foggy. The dying dude has a whole new set of dialogue, which you will, of course, instantly skip. You kill Hillock, 
and then you see the second cinematic for the game begin. It's the entire film Morbius in a 30 second GIF format. After the film ends, you are in your hideout with a new level 68 character. You also gain the achievement, it's Morbing time. And to me, I think that's the best answer. To me, that's the greatest form of alternate leveling we can have. To me, that's the final path of exile. I'm Matt Lighty, and I hope you enjoyed the video.